having the fates conspire to augur in cataclysmic external and internal events in order to undermine the rotten edifice that we stand worshipping and bring it crashing down around us. As this photonic light gradually intensifies, most people's consciousness are going to rebel, as we all do when a bright light is shined in our face. We turn away and cover our eyes. We may even strike out at those holding the light towards us. Those few that can face this light and who are prepared for it will be guided, given their healing, and able to live their dreams. But these few will have to be deeply able to understand what's happening to those around them in order to be defended against the worst effects of this irregular but radical change. David Icke, another person who thinks that the 26,000 year procession cycle will somehow pass the earth through a light nebula in 2012, says the following. Then we can go into a stage two, which is an incredible consciousness shift which is going to happen, and is happening for many people already, but it can happen for everyone if we open up to the knowledge of what's going on, and to do that, the edifice of oppression must go. And the second is not going to happen for many people unless we remove the edifice of suppression. Because many people are going to think what the heck is going on and they're going to go through this great change in a complete fog of what's happening. Fear, oh my goodness, what's happening? Two things to do here. One is to start focusing on how the world is controlled, identifying it, removing it. Secondly, we can all concentrate on the transformation spiritually that is unfolding in the year 2012 and beyond. The following is a random channeling session that I pulled from the internet. It says, there is an extraordinary divine alchemy also happening with your planet and humanity as it experiences this karmic transmutation. The roots of the new human evolution are taking hold. Through the changes that will occur in your lives and in your world over the next years, a human society of oneness will indeed be birthed. If there is no change, no upheaval, which causes the old ways and systems to be evaluated and dispensed with, then no evolution is possible. I and Tassarian and all the 2012 proponents go on at length to tell us why we need to evolve from the spiritual state that we are currently in. It's more of the tired old line that all the problems of the world were caused by religions and that religions, especially the Christian one, is the greatest enemy of enlightenment. This is the idea that I explain in my video, Religious Wars, Fact or Fiction, that is also a piece to this complicated web of indoctrination we are all going through. The sum of the video is that it was never true believers of any religions that caused wars, but instead it was the governments who through controlling education systems perverted religious teachings so that they could get their people to fight wars for them. In fact, that's the reason why the Bible was kept from Christian after Rome took over Christianity. Because true Christian teaching has literally no place for anything but absolute peace and love for your enemies. And that concept is not good for governments that love war. So I will now stop beating around the bush and tell you what I think is going to happen and how it will lead to genocide. Keep in mind, this is my opinion and I'm still working on it. And I'm sure that many of the details that I will propose about how we will get there are going to be wrong. But we will get there. A major war will be set up by those that have the power to make things like that happen. I think there will be an effort to make this war seem like the same war prophesied at the end of the Bible in order to give credibility to their next move. There will also be, before that, an effort in the coming years to make a man seem like the biblical Antichrist. They will make it look like he has made a peace agreement with Israel and the whole bit. They will put him in charge of some quasi-global government, maybe the UN or the EU. This system and man will essentially be the fall guy. They will be destroyed to make what comes after them seem like the prophesied utopia. The culmination of this system will be a nasty war in the midst of terrible economic devastation. Basically everything that can be engineered to go wrong will be going wrong at that time. It is my belief that they're going to make this be around 2012, and possibly even December 21st, 2012, but it doesn't have to be. It just needs to be close to that date for it to work for them. An event will happen that they will control that will activate all the years of indoctrination that we have been subjected to over the last few years. 
The following could happen a number of ways, but many things will be accomplished with it. I have hypothesized in the past that it could be done with a false alien manifestation, where we are all saved from ourselves, just in the nick of time, by them. And I still think it will have something to do with this, i.e. extraterrestrials. One of the reasons is because it would also activate some of our other programming at the same time, namely that we have been, in the same manner as 2012, taught to think that alien existence equals no God. And so it would help us to go into the new system united with a new belief about our origins, as well as a worldwide rejection of God. This will be important later. This new religion will be one where man believes himself to be God, again activating years of latent programming. The aliens will encourage this belief by telling us that we aren't evolved like them, but that we too can be as gods, like them. And I will eat my hat if it is not claimed that they genetically created us, because that idea would finally give evolutionists a way to temporarily explain the DNA code, and the world would embrace this as a scientific truth. This is, of course, until someone asks the question, well, who created their DNA? The DNA code currently frustrates an honest evolutionist because the code betrays design. This would also be the best possible solution to the national sovereignty problems that a world government has had, as we would willingly give up our flags and constitutions, as we would now believe ourselves to be a part of a new galactic family, making national sovereignty obsolete. There is one more ingredient that will be added to the mix. This is the one that you will, if you understand theosophy, know that any utopia can't be complete without, i.e., the world teacher. In addition to the stated objectives, as of 1889, Helena Blavatsky purportedly had told a group of theosophical students that the real purpose of establishing the society was to prepare humanity for the reception of the world teacher when he appeared on earth. This was repeated again, more publicly, by Annie Besant in 1896 five years after Blavatsky's death. In Blavatsky's own writings, the only reference to a similar idea indicated that it would not be for at least a century. The world will believe that an ancient avatar, or god, has returned to save them from themselves. He will possibly claim a relationship with some sort of extraterrestrial, but he will most importantly have in some way destroyed the Patsy Antichrist. This person will activate another program that we have been given, this one is part of what's called the externalization of the hierarchy, part of which is an idea that many ages have seen an avatar come to them at crucial junctures in history, and that they were all the same entity, like Buddha, Krishna, and Jesus. They say that they were all part of the Christ consciousness, i.e. the same entity. This will be a genuine God in the flesh, people will believe, and as a planet, we will like it a lot. It is my belief that this man will in fact have many of the institutional churches convinced that he is the same Christ as the first century Christ, and that the reason all the pieces don't match up precisely is because the Bible was an error. After all, he didn't destroy the Antichrist, and he did save us from Armageddon, so he must be the Christ, only a little different than we were expecting. The lukewarm churches will embrace his message totally, as will the rest of the world. And like Hitler after World War I and the Treaty of Versailles, he will promise a brighter future than the one that people have just witnessed, one with no more wars, no religion, a new world order. We will give him the reins to this new technological utopia, but it is my belief that this will not be the end of bad things at all, but the beginning of the worst time in the history of humanity, one where this imposter will force the world through a technological means, possibly a chip, to worship him. And this is why, in my opinion, when the disciples of the real Jesus asked him what his return would be like, he started his answer with this. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. My friends, every conceivable conspiracy has in some way or another been leading up to this event. It has all been preparation for this. This is a spiritual war, and there is a very powerful entity 
that wants to try to extract the worship from every human on this earth. For the first time, he has the infrastructure to control people in such a way to do this. All of the money systems and the geopolitics and the police state and the chemical poisoning of the planet have all played a role in preparing the world to be spiritually milked by this ancient cherub. But no matter how powerful he is, he and all his demons are still subject to the lowliest Christian who has been given total power over all dark spirits, because the real Christ has given it to them, even though most do not understand what they have or use it. But this is why it is said, the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world.